My husband and I welcomed our baby girl, Kala Lucia, in May of 2018. Maternity leave let me step off the fast moving train of medical training and then practicing primary care medicine for seven years. On August 19th, sleep deprived, um, with my 10 week old baby girl taking an afternoon nap in my arms, I happened upon the documentary, The Inconvenient Truth sequel. Hot tears streamed down my cheeks and fell onto hers. The cool intellectual way that I'd taken in the facts of the climate crisis until then was washed into grief and terror for what each warming decade will mean for her life and for this precious child asleep on my chest. When she's 30, California will be a desert charred by hellish year-round climate fires and she might never really get to make the choice to be a mom herself. She might not ever get to feel the depth of this love more powerful than anything I have ever known before becoming a mother myself. My mama bear's instinct to protect my cub made the climate crisis visceral and very personal. And then on November 8th, the climate crisis punched me in the gut as Northern California burned yet again in the infamous campfire. For the 13 days before the Thanksgiving Day rain, the Bay Area was blanketed by toxic climate fire smoke from the north. We huddled inside for weeks with an indoor air purifier, trying to protect her tiny five-month-old lungs from the choking smoke outside. I compulsively checked the air quality index monitoring our local levels and hoping that maybe tomorrow I could safely take my baby for a walk in the neighborhood. Depressed to find the air pollution still in the very unhealthy range, I started wandering the globe's air quality maps, realizing that in India and in China, their local air pollution levels are always this toxic because of choking, dirty coal power plants, diesel engines whose pollution is simultaneously causing the climate crisis. I woke up in the nightmare preview of what all of our children's future will hold if we keep burning dirty fossil fuels. Toxic air, unnatural disasters, magnitudes of avoidable human suffering that my direct care as a medical doctor will be totally insufficient to treat. Suddenly, there was no way for me to be the mother, the physician, or person I respect without becoming an agent for change, changing our disastrous warming trajectory. How could I carry on acting normal when our, chi our children's future is on fire? Every day we remain silent about the climate crisis is like rolling up the windows and throwing away the key while leaving our children in a hot, locked car on a forever day. So I started showing up at the local chapter meetings of the Citizens Climate Lobby, nursing my baby beyond her bedtime in crowded community gathering rooms. But I quickly realized I wasn't leveraging my greatest tool, my status as a doctor. As a member of one of society's most trust trusted professions, this was the key resource that I had to bring to the climate movement. So I came back to work from maternity leave, motivated to grow concern for the climate crisis in my medical community. Waking up to climate has, has expanded my sense of, of professional responsibility. To be a good doctor now required me figuring out how to bring my medicine upstream, not only to protect everyone's future, but to immediately protect my patients with diseases caused by where they live. Like my patient, Ms. Johnson, who lived too close to the fog of diesel fumes from the freeway in her backyard for me to ever really adequately control her asthma. So I started networking with any colleague who was concerned about the climate crisis or environmental justice. I found mentors and allies who understand that neither our families nor our patients can be healthy if the air in our communities is sick. And I eventually co-founded the nonprofit Climate Health Now. We are a community of health professionals across California who embrace the fact that health is political, that there's no medicine for toxic air, and that the climate crisis is a health emergency. To do no harm, we must organize 
and advocate for urgent, equitable climate action to protect health. We are building a movement of healers calling a climate code red because lives are on the line and we need you to join us. So as the window to cancel the climate apocalypse closes in the next eight years, we understand that the greatest good that we can do with our professional credentials is to join together, put on our white coats and stand up for health by making our way to the front of every boardroom into every legislator office and to demand that every decision maker respond to our collective climate health emergency by acting with urgent policies to protect our children. My daughter and all of our children deserve clean air in every breath they take in a stable climate and a healthy planet, which is why I invite, invite you to join Climate Health Now to link arms with your colleagues and to stand up for health. Our silence is doing harm. We must stand up together to safeguard all of our children's future. I hope you'll join.